Hey guys, it's me, Ronald Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We'll look at the uh, nor'easter, and we'll also take a look at this uh, cold front that is coming Tuesday, Wednesday of next week across the Intermountain West. First of all, I've had a few questions um, about Snowshoe, West Virginia. Um, appreciate the question. Snowshoe, I, I think you'll get a little bit, and that's a live camera. Um, from this uh, developing nor'easter, maybe an inch or two, but most of this, the thrust of the storm is going to be up in, along the east coast and the northeast. Your next best chance of snow is on the second, third, and maybe trickling into the fourth, and then I think it turns drier after that. So two, three, maybe into early four, and then it dries out. So that's Snowshoe, West Virginia. Um, let's go into Colorado where we have an absolutely spectacular day. Blue skies here. Look at this view from Keystone. You're looking out into Summit County, out into the, uh, the Gore Range there in the distance. Uh, what a Friday to be up there in Keystone. No new snow for Keystone, A Basin, Loveland, Winter Park, Eldora, uh, Summit County until Tuesday. Wednesday and maybe Thursday of next week here um, with this fast moving cold front that's going to drop down on the eastern periphery of this high. And let me just show you what the storm track is. So, all the action is being routed right now, like this down with the jet, and there's a big trough down here over the Gulf. And then this is the magic that's going to happen over the East Coast this weekend um, with that kind of a storm track. So, that's essentially your jet stream. Um, this is the water vapor imagery. So, the reds and the oranges are drier air aloft. The whites and blues are going to be actual moisture transport. So there is, and I'm going to mark this appropriately here, um, there's the low that's going to take shape right in here. You can almost see where the clouds are gathering around this. Um, at the same time, there is a cold front. You can almost see it in the clouds coming down, and that will merge with this low and help to spin it up and give it a little kick. And then this low will then travel up the coast. Now, the position of the low where will it finally end up and how close to the coast? The data has been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with this thing, um, pulling the snow out of the big ski areas, pushing it back in, pulling it out. So um, at this point, we're still waiting for the low to develop and begin the track because that's how we're going to know where the final snow amounts, the final heaviest band is going to set up. Uh, I would still say it's somewhat of a mystery as to how far inland the snow is going to spread to the big ski areas up in the northeast, but I'll show you what I'm thinking here coming up in just a sec. Let me show you, in fact, what the GFS is thinking, um, the American model. Um, this is the uh, 12Z run. Um, so you can see it here. By the time we get into tonight, that low is really spinning up off North Carolina. Um, here comes the front, a little bit of snow in West Virginia and snowshoe. So the two combine, and here comes the low dropping to a 990, 983. Here's early Saturday. Here's Saturday morning. So this latest projection here for Saturday morning at a 979. Um, heavy snow is over Massachusetts, Boston, and it's kind of brushing southeast Vermont or southeast New Hampshire and parts of southern Maine with blizzard conditions. I don't see a ton of snow for Vermont, unfortunately, with this kind of track. And then that night, look at there's almost a secondary low. That's really interesting. Look at that second low behind it come in and drop from 999 to 973. That's an interesting setup. So some of that snow gets thrown back into New Hampshire with that second low. That's fascinating. Um, and then the whole thing moves out. By Sunday morning, it's long gone. Out west, there's nothing. It's just high pressure. Um, it's high pressure until we finally get a storm in the Pacific Northwest. You can see it happening right there Saturday night, Sunday, Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, Beast, uh, Banff, um, up in the parts of Revelstoke. You're going to get snow late in the weekend. And then the whole thing will drop south. This is the cold front right here. Look at it dropping down through Montana, Wyoming. This is Tuesday morning, the 1st of February right here. The whole thing drops down the eastern periphery of that high into Colorado. It may brush Utah. I don't have anything significant for Utah. Um, I'll show you those numbers. But this develops into a nice little storm over Colorado. You can see the low spinning up over northern New Mexico. Here's the 2nd of February, the morning of the 2nd right here. Snow in Colorado, colder air coming in. Develops into a, a nice Midwest storm system. Um, by Thursday morning, it's long gone and continues off into the northeast. Now, that is potentially it. High pressure may rebuild across the Intermountain West. Um, let's see what's indicated here. This is the 5th of February. Northern tier states, Montana, potentially by next weekend, get something dropping down into Wyoming and maybe through Colorado by Sunday, Monday of next weekend. 
Um, but then that high pressure, this is the unfortunate thing that's emerging. While there may be a big storm on the first second of February, there may be a high pressure that rebuilds in. Um, they're just, we can't get anything into California and very little into Nevada and Utah with this type of pattern. All right, so let me show you what I'm thinking as far as numbers here. All of today through the 6th of February, um, you can see the numbers in Colorado. There's nothing significant. I mean, three to six inches, more uh, down around northern New Mexico, Taos, uh, potentially nine. There's some up there between Jackson Hole and Grand Targhee and Montana. Bigger numbers up around Stevens Pass, Baker, Whistler, and into the interior of BC. But nothing for California. Very little for the Wasatch if this pattern holds in that unfortunate high rebuilds um, into early February. That's the way it looks. Now, up into the northeast, I've bounced around with my numbers, but it could be anywhere from a foot through uh, or two feet, one to two feet from Massachusetts into New Hampshire and into Maine, depending on the exact track. And if there's that second low, that's kind of a new object on the map, too. So, you know, I'm bouncing around with these totals. Let's wait to see where the low actually develops, and that's going to give us a much clearer picture as to how much snow is going to fall at these big resorts up in the northeast. All right, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.